it's time for the Rob Ash Show, featuring Drake University football with your host, Mark Meisenheimer. The Rob Ash Show is sponsored by Des Moines Mitsubishi, Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, and Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Thanks for tuning into the Rob Ash Show along with head football coach, Drop Drake is Rob Ash. I'm Mark Meisenheimer. Coach, you go on the road. Things aren't supposed to go this smooth, are they, on the road? <laughs> Not at Butler especially, Mark. We had a great game out there. We won 43-6. to We got to play all of our reserves in the fourth quarter, and that's one of the, one of the best performances we've ever had overall. Uh, out there in the in the Butler Bowl, so it was a it was a pretty good trip. A little bit of a slow start, but boy, once you guys got rolling, it, it, it was going. It was really a great uh, comeback. Butler came out in like every team's going to do against us now with their best shot. They played great on defense. They had some wrinkles on offense in the first quarter. They played extremely tough against us, but our guys have some character and some determination, and we got better and better and better as the game went on and and won it really literally going away. All right, we will break everything down in the highlights here on the Rob Ash Show. So, folks, stay with us. Des Moines Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Des Moines Mitsubishi is now in our new bigger location at 90th and Hickman. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. With more room, more selection, and more great deals. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Like your choice of late model eclipses. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Now is the time to buy. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Now at 90th and Hickman in Clive. Informal elegance, an eclectic but appealing menu, impeccable service, and West Des Moines' only non-smoking lounge. Where else? CK's Steakhouse in the West Des Moines Marriott at 1250 74th Street, West Des Moines. The grower is connected to the trucker. The trucker is connected to the florist. The florist is connected to the ride van. And soon, two families will connect for better or worse. When staying connected matters, count on your hometown wireless communication experts at Electronic Engineering. Electronic Engineering, connections you can count on. Hi, Tito. I hope you enjoy the empanadas and Coke. Love, Mom. Aww. Hey, man. Mm, something smells good. Hi, Tito. <sighs> hey, man. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Now, Coach, <clears throat> you're in Indianapolis. It's kind of a cold windy day and you're in this old this old type stadium it's like almost kind of like a throwback uh, game well it really was mark it was the conditions were very difficult the butler bowl is was built in the 19 teens you know it seats 20,000 people it's way down deep of the big bowl around it, big amphitheater in the end zone and, and the winds were 20 to 30 miles an hour temperatures in the upper 40s and the winds swirl around that bowl we we watched for half an hour during warm-up and couldn't figure out which way the wind was blowing and the guys were a little bit cold and so forth. So it, it put a very difficult, it made it very difficult to throw the ball deep. And I thought Butler did a great job in the, in the uh, defensive game plan that they had, pressing our receivers, putting a lot of guys in against the running game, and challenging us to throw deep in those difficult conditions. And it made for a very difficult first quarter it, for you as we go to the highlights and take a look. Right, they, uh, they really did a nice job. We, uh, we won the, the toss and deferred, and that's gonna end up being an important deal, getting the ball in the second half. And they came out here. Here's a, a kickoff return. I think the return man did this on his own. Broke outside. Ryan Horvath, our kicker, had to make the tackle, but they get the ball up on the 40-yard line. They completed a couple passes, and then on a third down play here, Nick Ross comes up. It was third and short, about two yards. He got him stopped. They punted us deep. We went three and out and had to punt it right back to him. So the first exchange was very poor for us. A bad field position, and then a three and out. Now the defense uh, with Butler taking over. Watch Pat Forlidi come from behind. Perfect job of stripping the ball away. Brant Perriott 
squeezing the ball there on the ground. Yeah, you got it, Brant. <laughs> but unfortunately, we went three and out again, and now this punt gets knocked down by the wind. The wind was very, very tough coming around the, the horseshoe there, and, and uh, we did, well, got the ball down to the 15. Now, Butler comes out here. We do a pretty good job on, on first and second down, and then here's a sack uh, from uh, Brian Conway, number 33. Now, Mark, this is a third and 17. We get a sack, almost get there. Oh, how great did they catch, get that? great catch, and they get a first down on third and 17 out of their own end zone, and that seemed to spark them. They ran a little uh, out pattern to the tight end, got about 20 yards. Now, watch the blitz. The tight end at the top of the screen is going to drag across, so they're actually the flanker on motion. The blitz almost gets there. They outflank us, and they get the touchdown. That ended up being about an 85 yard drive for a touchdown. They missed the extra point but that was a little consolation. So we're behind six to nothing and we haven't done anything yet. And then Jason Jones, who had a terrific game for us, gives us a little spark, gets a nice catch on a ball going up and taking it away from the defender out to the 50 yard line. I'd like to say we drove it on in, but we didn't. So here's our third punt of the first quarter. Again, not a, not a great job punting because of the windy conditions. And so Butler has a six point lead in the ball and then Ooh. Curtis Martindale <laughs> untouched right up the middle on the blitz. And that uh, seemed to spark our defense a little bit. And then finally, we got something going. Now, up to this point, Scott Fadevong had negative yards rushing. But that run got him on tracks a little bit. Then the play fake, you've seen this play before. And we got the ball out to James Mickley, running over people down to the 10-yard line. And then Mike Bialis getting a nice run. What a great and, day for him. Yeah, it was a good day for the big guys. You know, and Matt Haas at fullback did a good job. And here's our hippo group of all of our tackles and tight ends and fullbacks. And, and you can watch Haas and Nickley and uh, Chris McDonald coming around on the power play. And Mike Bialis gets in for the touchdown. We made the extra point. But now we're in the second quarter before we get our first lead. Defense, though, is starting to figure things out. Here's a good job, a deflection by Kevin Jennings, KJ. So that uh, deflected that pass. And then a good blitz by Jimmy Adams forcing the the bad throw out in the flat. So defense now is starting to play with a little more intensity. Offense starting to get things going a little bit. Nice pass there from Connor to Shea Maroney, number 80. And then here, we're, you know, they, again, they had packed it in against the run. We throw the ball down here to Jason Jones. It looks like a good play and a completion. Now watch what they do. The officials are gonna come in. JJ caught this ball and was down on the ground. They rolled around and the guy had it and this field judge gave it to Butler. Now we're gonna replay this. Here's the ball, caught. See the knee down? The ball was, and he just sort of ripped it out from, from J.J. when J.J. was on his back. The ball came into his hands. That's not even close. No, that's not even close. And that, was, that goes down as an interception for Connor Justice, which is not deserved at all. And Butler got a good home, hometown call there. But uh, Jace Dennison comes back and helps us with a very nice deflection on third down. That was the same play they converted on that third and 17 and uh, Jay stopped at that time. Now we're starting to figure out some blocking schemes to block all those guys. Now here's a big play, third and four. We run the ball out of the shotgun. Great job by our line, picking up a little blitz, and Scotty breaks three finally for a 44-yard run. That was, to me, was a breakout play in the game. We finally freed Scotty up for a big play. Third down and four, passing situation. We run the football, and I think that sort of set everybody free. Now we could play hard. Conway had to play the whole game. Adam Lackey was banged up a little bit, and Brian played extremely well. Nick Ross was also in on that. Good coverage downfield here. Now watch another good play, a tipped ball right into Riley Yem's hands, okay? Nice tip by the safety, and I think that was uh, Freeze, and, and Riley picks up the ball in a deflection. Very alert play by him. Back to full speed here. He's got angles on everybody except their running back, knocks him out at the four-yard line. So about a 50-yard return with that interception. And then we go a couple plays, and this is the third, second play, I guess, after the interception, and Mike Bialis runs it in. Our guys did a great job in short yardage situations, getting the ball in, running for touchdowns. So 20 to six. Now I've got a few special teams highlights on here. <laughs> Eric Papp with a great tackle on the, uh, on the kickoff team there. The blitz up the middle again. That blitz was one that they couldn't handle with the free safety, Curtis Martindale uh, coming up the middle. Quarterback again trying to find some time. Guys closed in on him in a hurry. He had to get rid of the ball. Uh, Pap on the blitz that time. You can see the defense starting to hit their stride a little bit. The blitzes were very effective. Trying to throw it down the field here and Curtis Martindale makes an interception. This is with about two minutes left in the half. This gave us a real nice opportunity. 
to, uh, to get another score before the half. We went in our two-minute drill, found J.J. over the middle. Great job by him, getting some extra yardage here. He really played a terrific game. We got down to the 15-yard line, we got ourselves into a third down situation here. Ran the draw play to Scott Fadebong. I thought he might score on this, but he gets down to the two. Now there's about 30 seconds left in the half. We tried a little rollout pass play here. Now this is second down. We didn't need to throw it here. We could have thrown that ball away, but we threw it into the end zone for the interception. So not a very good uh, outcome to the first half. We should have at least got a field goal. We'll have to work on that, but I'm, I'm glad we had that practice of that situation because if it comes up again, I think we'll execute better. You go into the locker room after a turnover, but you really have to feel that you're controlling this game on both sides of the ball, aren't you? We, we felt a lot better at the half, you know, after the way we played in the second quarter than what we saw in the first quarter. But what I liked at halftime was our guys were not satisfied. They knew that we could play better even than we did in the second quarter, and there was no sense that the game was over, and I liked that. All right, highlights of the second half coming up, but first, here are some friends of Drake football. Putnam Gourmet Steaks is pleased to offer you a healthier alternative in steak. These steaks are hand cut from 100% USDA choice all natural beef. The cattle are corn fed 320 to 365 days with no growth hormones, subtherapeutic antibiotics, or steroids. Putnam Gourmet Steaks are the perfect healthy gift. Rob Ash and the Drake University football staff have enjoyed these steaks and the coaches agree they're incredibly tender and flavorful. Be sure to visit our website at www.putnamsteaks.com. Welcome back. Now, Coach, you had mentioned that the attitude was still up in the locker room. That's really important since you're on the road. Uh, you you, you want to stay up. N n don't get down on this. No. Well, that's right. And, and, Mark, I was really happy with the guys. You know, usually the coaches meet for a little while at halftime, and then we go in and talk to the players. And by the time we finished our little five minutes of coaches' meetings and walked in there, the guys were already talking to each other. Eric Papp was up talking to the team. J.J. was up talking to the team. And they were inspiring, urging the team not to consider the game over, not to think that we were finished with what we needed to do, and tell them, guys, we could play better than we had played. It was really very easy for me to, to do the halftime you know, motivation. I didn't have to do much at all because the players, the seniors especially, had already taken over. And like you say, on the road, in those kind of conditions, that's really valuable to have senior leadership like that. All right, let's go to those second half highlights, and I believe you guys got the ball we coming got, out of the locker room. We did, and uh, the point here is that we, in spite of all that, you know, we, did, we came out just a little sluggish. I don't think we got out and got warmed up enough, Mark. You know, we need to think about that because it was a chilly day. We looked just slightly sluggish. We messed up on our first possession. They got two 10-yard gains to start their possession, and I thought, man, what's going on here? But now here's a key play. That was a third down play, and right here at the 40-yard line, early in the second half, Butler decides to go for it on fourth down. I don't think this was the right decision for them. They tried to go with a long count. They ran the option, and we did a terrific job. Chris Daniels beat his man down the line, tackled the quarterback, and we got the ball at the 40-yard line. They could have punted us deep into our own territory and maybe got something going. Uh, instead, we got a great boost there on that fourth down stop. Went with another shotgun play here on third down, and Scotty finds a way through to get a first down. Got us going. Then we ran a play action here. Scott had run the ball twice very effectively. Connor fakes it to him now and throws to Mickley. Mickley makes a great catch. The pass was behind him a little bit. Then another play action pass right here, and another pass to Mickley. Seems like he's the guy we go to, you know, when things are tough, when we need a big play. Down to the two yard line. He was frustrated that he didn't get in the end zone there. And then we ran off tackle again. 
Great job of guys finishing blocks. You know, they got on their people and they kept their legs driving and kept moving in. And that flurry right there changed the whole game. Stopping them on fourth down, driving for a touchdown, and from here on out, it was, uh, it was all Drake Bulldogs. Uh, that was Pat Forlidi right there leading the charge. We got the ball right back, another play action pass to Nickley. The sun came out for about three minutes. <laughs> back into the clouds again, again yeah, now. that's it. We had to go out on fourth down here. We went for it here. It was very short, six inches. Mike Bialis did a great job diving over the line, keeping the drive alive. And here's a nice play. They covered JJ on the flag, so Connor finds his check down receiver, Shea Maroney. Shea does a very nice job running with the ball, protects the ball here late in his run. And we've got a bootleg here. And watch this play. Bootleg pass to Tyler Putnam in the corner. You can barely see it. His feet are inbounds. He reaches out and makes a terrific catch. It's too bad the TV cameraman from Indianapolis was in the way there because that's the best shot I have of it. But the official comes up and gives him the, the play. His feet were in. I'm not sure the ball ever crossed the plane, but when the ball was in his hands, his feet were inbounds. Now, watch this hit. Jimmy Adams coming in from the right side. Boom. Look out. I briefly knocked Jimmy unconscious for oh, about 10 man. seconds. Then he woke up and he said, Coach, did I hit him hard? <laughs> we said, yes, Jimmy, you did. The defense now is starting to have some fun. I mean, the game was really going in our favor. The guys starting to play well, coming up and making some big hits. You know, there's Nick Ross. Our linebackers started to do a great job, and then you know everything started to go bad for Butler. The last play of the third quarter, they snapped the ball over the punter's head for a safety. So the third quarter ends 36 to six, and then on the first play of the fourth quarter, the kickoff after the safety, they put their punter in the game. He punted it, and we put J.J. back there, who's our punt return man with our kickoff return unit. And watch what happens here. Off he goes. Beautiful hole. He makes the punter miss. We'll get another look at that return. That'll be our play of the week later in the show. Uh, but that made the, the score 43-6. to six. And at that point, Mark, with 12 and a half, third, well, actually with 14-plus minutes left, you know, really that was the first play of the fourth quarter, we decided to put everybody else in after the kickoff. Pap, Pap separated the guy from the ball, and they just gave the ball to Butler anyway. And now we have our whole second string defense in, and this is a, a fourth down play, or third down play right here. The guys make a sack, that's Nick Rappa in there, and KJ, Kevin Jennings had uh, the initial first pressure. Look at the guys with the pressure on the quarterback. Corey Kapadich back in good coverage on fourth down. And our backups were able to get Butler stopped. And now we have some of our uh, backups on offense in. Paul Collins ran the ball several times coming down the stretch. We had to punt it back to Butler. Some of the guys you don't see much, there's uh, uh, Tim McNamara came in, 54. He's a really good linebacker. He makes a play there with Jimmy Adams. And here's uh, McNamara again with uh, Jacob Craig. Again, another fumble that they just gave back to Butler, trying to get this game over with. And here's Kevin Jennings again, Rappa. Uh, some of those guys, uh, Alex Sims, getting a chance to play. And then here's Clay Cleveland, our little punt return guy. Watch a stiff arm, boom. Everybody got in the action. So, Mark, it was pretty fun. We ended up with a chance to play the last quarter with our second string guys in the game, and, and that is valuable for about uh, umpteen reasons. Uh, first of all, our, our starters didn't have to, to get extended through the game. I mean, they were able to finish the game and fresh. Nobody got injured at the end of the game. Plus, you get depth. You get a chance for the backup guys to play and get experience and get be better as football players. And I thought our second team defense in particular played extremely well. So that helps us for future games now, knowing that those guys can play and having them having gotten some chances to get in the game. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but when you have a performance like this on the road, you it, it's like you're building to something a little bit bigger. Do you feel that way? Your, your team keeps getting better week in, week out, and There's where, no where question. this go? There's no question about it, Mark. There, there is a sense that things are building. Our guys know this, they can feel it, they, and they feel it during practice. Every Monday, every Tuesday, they talk about getting better. They talked about climbing each rung of the ladder now throughout the course of the season. And as a coach, I've been doing this 30 years, and, and you, you know as a coach when you're watching your team through the season, if, if they're into that pattern of getting better every week, you can see the plays starting to fit together, the guys starting to understand things better, and it does get better every week, and that's the sign of, of uh, Literally, championship teams, teams that have the best seasons, that's what has to happen. All right, let's not forget to take a look at the statistics from the game. Obviously, dominating in every category well, when you win 43-6. to six. That's right, but look at the most telling statistic of all over there, rushing yards. 
Okay, 213 for us, but only five My for goodness. Butler. That was an awesome performance. They had 76 yards rushing, but 71 yards losses on, uh, on sacks. So that was a great job. All righty, we're going to be right back here on the Rob Ash Show. So folks, stay with us. There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor feel, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax. There are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. Is your hard-earned money going down the drain every month when you pay rent? The Oaks Development Company has beautiful townhomes available for about the same amount you're paying in rent. They can offer no closing costs or origination fees. All major appliances are included. And at Frisbee Park in the Meadowland in Des Moines, you'll benefit from the tax abatement program for five years. So stop throwing your hard-earned money away and contact the Oaks Development Company today. Harley Eyes Pizza, the real thing. There's a big difference between the big chains and my independent pizzerias. And you can taste the difference right here at Polly Eyes Pizza. We've been serving our family recipe to Iowa family since 1957. Authentic crisp crust, custom blended mozzarella cheese, preservative free sausage, and fresh vegetables. So come try my pizza, Polly Eyes Pizza. Polly Eyes Pizza, the real thing. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Des Moines Mitsubishi is now in our new bigger location at 90th and Hickman. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. With more room, more selection, and more great deals. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Like your choice of late model eclipses. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Now is the time to buy. Mitsubishi has moved to Hickman. Now at 90th and Hickman in Clive. Exceeding expectations, experience, acceleration. Des Moines Mitsubishi. Welcome back. Now it is time for the Des Moines Mitsubishi Play of the Week, and we're going to take a look at Jason Jones' special play on offense. He also had a very special play on the special teams. This week's Play of the Week is a kickoff return for a touchdown by Jason Jones. The interesting thing is that this is a kickoff return after a safety. So Butler's kicking off from the 20-yard line, and they're using their punter as the kickoff man. Now because of that, Jason Jones is going to be on the field because he's our punt return guy. I'll show you the tape. Right here is the Butler punter punting the ball. I've got a regular kickoff return unit on the field, but we've got Jason Jones back here catching the punt. He does a good job fielding the punt. We'll slow it down and show you the blocking here. The guys are making good blocks, kicking people out. We've got a wall in here that walled off the inside guys. JJ has a beautiful lane up the hash mark. But now, on every kickoff return, there's one guy you can't block, and that's the kicker. That's up for the return guy to make him miss. Watch JJ make an inside move here. That freezes the, the uh, kicker, punter actually, and JJ is able to break to the outside, away from the other safety, number 10, and he's able to get down the sideline for the touchdown. Interesting point here is that JJ hasn't run a kickoff return all year. We, we've practiced it in theory, haven't done it live. Uh, but he just uh, took off, got some great blocks. It was a big play from our special teams in Indianapolis. All right, thank you, Coach. Now we're off to our player interview, and it's Eric Papp. He is a converted defensive back who now plays linebacker. Like Jason Jones, he does some of his work on special teams. So here he is, the senior linebacker, Eric Papp, this week's player interview. It feels real good right now. I'd I know one of the guys said he's, he's happy that we didn't lose the, and that we instead of winning because it's not exactly an easy place to play here. You never know what's going to happen when you come down here. Well, we knew coming in here that uh, Butler, they're always pretty tough at home. We had some shootouts here before, and uh, we came out a little slow today, but uh, really came back and established some dominance later in the game. And we, uh, we knew that the line was going to be critical. I told the boys at halftime that you know, the line's the, the heart of this team, and they took over in that second half. Uh, well, I was kind of—I've been bugging them to switch me from cornerback since I've been here. Uh, I put uh, about 15 pounds down in the off-season and got a chance in the spring ball of the practice at uh, outside linebacker. It just gives me a lot more opportunity to roam to the ball and you know be involved a lot more. It's just what I like to do. Yeah, we got Velpo next week. We're 2-0 in conference, and you know we've been talking all year. So, you know, step up that ladder, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going until we're done. And I got a little revenge payback for uh, Velpo last year and the overtime loss that we had to them. And, 
We're going to keep going strong. Let's go get him next week, baby. Here we go. Steal. Down the middle. One on one. Bam. Oh, Did you see what I see? Because I saw a robber. Does <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody want to coke? Yeah, yeah. we had up, man. Hey, you crazy, man? That's Corinthian leather. And use the footstool to get to the refrigerator. I'm running all over y'all like a treadmill. Oh, ball oh. home. Can't stop it. It's bad. I'm telling you, I'm just super nice in it, you know? That's all. When you nice, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's like all a dish that towel. That's all. Every hour somewhere in Iowa, the Iowa Lottery is helping make someone happy. On average, more than $300,000 is paid out to Iowa Lottery players each day. And what helps Iowa smile even brighter is the lottery's contribution to the state of Iowa, which has totaled nearly $900 million for use in education, natural resources, economic development, and more. Winning is fun, especially when we all win. There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor feel, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax. There are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. At Regency Homes, it's about building smarter. It's about building healthier, environmentally friendly homes. It's about building homes that are safe, secure, and energy efficient. It's about smarter financing. Regency. Building smarter. When you add it up, it's about getting a lot more home for your money. It's about building the new American dream. Regency Homes. Contact your real estate professional. Welcome back, folks, to the Rob Ash Show. We want to take a look at the standings, and uh, things looking very good for the Drake Bulldogs. Well, we were in the lead by ourselves right now. Dayton played out of the league this week, so we were 2-0. and They are 1-0, and and, and the, uh, you know, it looks great for Drake to be back up on top again. And Obviously, down in the south, Jacksonville's in the driver's seat because Davidson beat Moorhead State. Now, Jacksonville has to play Moorhead State this coming week. That is either going to be a three-way tie down there in the south, or Jacksonville will be the winner. All right, and you're not done, obviously, talking about this game. This is a game that you're going to want to talk about. Exactly. You've got, you've got your radio show, Quarterback Club. Let's remind folks of those again. Radio show is at Autographs. Again, a great place to come. Come on down and see us down there. Uh, 100th and Douglas Live, also on KRNT, which uh, is doing a great job carrying our games and the show all season long. All right, and coming up, you have Valparaiso. Uh, this next week. What are we looking at here? Well, Valparaiso has a great offense. Of course, they have some of the best receivers in the league. Rob Giancola coming back from last year is, a, is one of the top players in the Pioneer Football League. They have been good on offense. They have struggled on defense this year. They've allowed a lot of points. They are 0-2. They lost to Dayton. They lost to San Diego, two teams they beat last year. They also beat us last year, so maybe this is a, a year for revenge. And this is a game that could be a very dangerous game because you have Dayton in two weeks. And I, I mean, I, I've been looking forward to it, but you don't want to be looking forward to it. That's right. We've, okay, we can't look ahead. It's got to be an opportunity for us to focus on the only game that matters, which is this week's game against Falpo. All right, that is all the time we have here on the Rob Ash Show. So 1 o'clock game against Valpo at, at Drake home. Stadium this week. For Coach Rob Ash, I'm Mark Meisenheimer. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Well,
talk about the game a little bit. What was your game plan? Well, we knew coming in here that uh, Butler, they're always pretty tough at home. We had some shootouts here before, and uh, we came out a little slow today, but uh, really came back and established some dominance later in the game. And we, uh, we knew that the line was going to be critical. I told the boys at halftime that, you know, the line's the, the heart of this team, and they took yeah. over in that second half. Talk about your switch from cornerback uh, to linebacker, how you feel about that? Uh, well, I was kind of, I've been bugging them to switch me from cornerback since I've been here. Uh, I put uh, about 15 pounds down in the offseason and got a chance in the spring ball of the practice at uh, outside linebacker. It just gives me a lot more opportunity to roam to the ball and you know be involved a lot more, which is what I like to do. Talk about some of those big hits you had today. Well, a couple of them were on kickoff, and some big holes opened up, and I thought the guy was going to put a move on me a couple of times, but he just ran straight up there, and I think I got the better of him a couple of times. And then another one of them was a crossing route, and I was just sitting waiting for it, and it came right into my bread basket. Well, it's, you know, everybody's got their own gap. You know, we don't really scheme for any one person. Uh, it's, it's whoever gets there gets there. But uh, our, our, our blitzes were really opening up for us today. And a free safety coming in the backside. And they, they really could, they were having trouble picking our blitzes up. And, and no matter what spot they were coming from, that really worked to our benefit today. Yeah, we got Velpo next week. We're 2 0 in conference. And, you know, we've been talking all year, so, you know, step up that ladder. And, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going until we're done. And I got a little revenge payback for uh, Valpo last year and the overtime loss that we had to them. And we're going to keep going strong. Talk about you guys look like you're dealing both offensively and defense. Talk about the whole team. Yeah, the, off the offense and defense, we're really starting to come together on both sides of the ball real well. We're starting to peak at the right time. And, it's, you know, it's, it's great to see the offenses to have, like, three, those long drives that keep us on the bench and keep us refreshed. And then we got to get those three and outs and just keep Keep them punting the ball. We're looking real good right now. Last two times you guys had losses down there. How does this feel to help It feels real good right now. I, I know one of the guys said he's, he's happy that we didn't lose the, and that we instead of winning because it's not exactly an easy place to play here. You never know what's going to happen when you come down here. Let's go get them next week, baby. <laughs>